Hi everyone! Welcome to my class. Now, who's excited to learn a new math topic today? Me! And I know you are too. So let's get cracking. Ready? Okay. So today our topic will be angle properties of triangles. Alright, now the first property that we're going to look at has to do with the interior angles of a triangle. And by interior, I mean the angles that are formed inside of the triangle. So here we have a triangle drawn. Now let's assume that angle A here is 70 degrees, angle B here is 50 degrees, and angle C here is 60 degrees. If we should add all those angles together, our answer would be 180 degrees. And this applies to all other triangles. Now, angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180 degrees. And so our first property states that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So that's it for our first property. Now, the second property we will look at has to do with the exterior angles of a triangle. Now, an exterior angle is formed when we extend any side of a triangle. So here we see that we have three exterior angles being formed and they're all going in the same direction. So if we should rotate this triangle, it's going in an anti-clockwise direction. So when we extend, um, when we extend line CD, sorry, CA here to D, we have CAD now. So the exterior angle formed between BAD here, we call it X, right? Because we do not know what it is. So how do we find what this exterior angle is? Now, there are two ways we can do this. We can pull from our memories or previous lessons that we would have learned about angles that are formed on a straight line. Angles that are formed on a straight line has a measure of 180 degrees. So to find angle X, we can simply subtract 70 degrees from 180 degrees and that would give us 110 degrees. Now, how else could we have gotten 110 degrees here? If we should look at the interior angles of the triangle, we will notice that there are two angles inside the triangle that we can add to get 110 degrees. That is angle B and angle C. So, angle B plus angle C would give us 110 degrees. Now, we should notice that these are interior angles and they are basically opposite to angle X here. So, we can assume that, that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to 2nd angle property of triangle. Now, if we should look on the right here, we have another triangle drawn. It's triangle PQR and we should notice that it is a right angle triangle. Now, we're going to be facing some angles inside and we're going to make some comparisons. So let's assume that angle R is 50 degrees and angle P is 40 degrees. Now, we're going to compare the angles in terms of their sizes. So we're going to compare it from largest to smallest. So the largest angle in this triangle would be angle Q, which is a 90 degree angle because it is a right angle. So let's assume so angle Q is greater than angle R and therefore means that angle R must also be greater than angle P. Now 
Let's look at the lengths of the sides that are opposite to these angles and see if we can make the same comparison. So, the side that is opposite to angle Q is PR. So, side PR, side PR is greater than side PQ. And we notice that side PQ is opposite to the second largest angle in the triangle. So, we're going to be making some comparisons there. And it therefore means that side PQ must also be greater than side QR. So, what can we assume here? Or what can we conclude, rather? We can see that the side that is opposite to the largest angle is the largest side or has the largest measurement. And the side that is opposite to the smallest angle has the smallest measurement. So that leads us to our third angle property of triangle. So this is the third one. And the third angle property of triangle states that the side that is opposite to the largest angle is larger than the side that is opposite to the smallest angle. Okay? And that goes for all three sides. So here we see the comparison. If angle Q, which is opposite to side PR, is greater than angle R, which is opposite to side PQ, then side, sorry, then angle R must be greater than angle P, and side PQ must also be greater than QR. What did I just say? All right, so I'm going to just erase the first triangle that we drew on the board so we can have some space to write the third property. All right, so the third property of a triangle the side opposite to the largest angle is greater than the side opposite to the smallest angle. And the same thing would go for the angles. If we should replace the word side and angle in the theorem, then we would get the same thing. So if we should reword it as the angle opposite to the largest side is greater than the angle opposite to the smallest side. So it goes both ways for the angles as well as the sides.